welcome uh, to our revision today and uh, we are going to have a discussion on uh, a two column cash book a two column cash book is going to just contain uh, two columns just like the name suggests that is going to be the cash column and also the bank uh, column so we are going to do a revision uh, on uh, november of november 2018 that is next revision part of uh, the first paper and um, the question is going to read as follows. Uh, they are saying Pele started a business on May 2018 with 8,000 in cash. The following transactions took uh, place during the month. So we have a May 2 paid rent of 15,000 in cash. And then we have May 4 deposited 50,000 of the cash into a business bank account. And then we have May 9, purchased goods for 21,000 and paid by check. And then we have May 12, the cash sales amounted to 28,500. And then we have May 13, sold goods, uh, ten and shillings, 17,500 uh, to Cyrus on a credit. And then on May 15, purchased goods for 46,400 from Tito on a credit and then we have may 24th and that is not being projected clear let me project it for you so may 24th they are saying a uh, silas settled this account by check and then may 31st it leads a uh, paid tito half of the amount by check so the question requires to prepare a two uh, column uh, cash book so I'm going to project the format of a two-column cash book and then we start preparing it as soon as possible. So this is the format of a two-column cash book. You can be able to see it has the debit side and then it has the credit side. The philosophy behind the cash book is that you should be able to know what are you going to record on the debit side. What we are going to record on the debit side, we are going to record all the receipts, all the receipts. And when we talk about receipts, that is when money is coming to the business, whereby we are going to have cash inflow to the business, money coming into the business. So when we are being paid by our credit customers, our debtors, money coming in, then we are going to record that particular transaction on the debit side. Then, what are we going to record on the credit side? Okay, on the credit side, we are going to record all the payments. All the payments, we are going to record it on the credit uh, side. So, uh, I want us to now go to the question, and uh, I suggest that uh, you post the video a little bit, you write the question somewhere, so that we can be able to move together, so that I cannot keep on adjusting, adjusting the camera and focusing on the question. So, um, the first part, it, they were saying that uh, uh, Pele started a business on May 1st, 2018, with 8,000 uh, in cash. So that is the opening balance. And uh, the opening balance is going to be recorded on the debit side. So we are going to write the date, which is going to be May 1st, that is May 1. And just like that, that's the opening balance there. And then uh, they are saying that um, that's what we started the business with. So that's going to be the opening balance, which is the balance put down. So the balance put down is going to be recorded under the details here as the balance brought down. And uh, because they are saying that uh, it was in cash basis, then what we are just going to do, we are going to record it under the cash column. So we come to the cash column and record the 8,000. Uh, uh, and, uh, and record that particular 8,000. So remember, sometimes you can be given two balances, the two balance put down, so opening balances, both um, in cash and also um, maybe uh, by, by bank. 
So if it is uh, started a business with uh, uh, 8,000 in cash, maybe 20,000 in bank or at bank, then you are going to record under the bank column as a balance put down. So under the cash, the, ba the balance put down in the cash column is going to be the, on the debit side always. But the bank column, sometimes they can just be able to ask a question whereby they say, I started a business with 8,000 um, um, in hand, cash in hand, and then uh, 20,000 cash at the bank. And then that cash at the bank, uh, maybe th they put it inside a bracket, so to be 20,000, but uh, inside a bracket that way. So if it's going to be 20,000 inside a bracket as the opening balance, then that's a bank overdraft, whereby the balance put down under the bank is right now to be credited because this is a bank overdraft. When a figure is inside a bracket in accounting, uh, it uh, means either bank overdraft or maybe you are erasing from somewhere, you are minusing. So um, that's what you need also to be able to know. So we have recorded the first transaction there, that is uh, the, balance, the opening balances. And then on May 2, they are saying uh, paid rent of 15,000 in cash. A paid rent of 15,000 uh, in cash. So what I'm going to be able to do is that uh, because we are talking about payments and pay all payments are going to be recorded on the credit side. So we are going to record this particular payment on the credit side. So it's going to be on May 2. May 2, and then uh, under the details, I write rent, I write rent that way, and uh, because it was in cash, I write my 15,000 there, because it was in cash. And then uh, May 4, they are saying that they deposited 50,000 of the cash into a business bank account. So we deposited 50,000 of the cash into a business bank account. So a question like this, a transaction like this, this is what we call a contra entry, which is going to appear both on the debit side and also on the credit side. So this particular um, um, contra entry, what I'm going to ask myself, uh, what is increasing here and what is decreasing? Is the bank uh, balances increasing? Is the cash balances increasing? Is the bank balances decreasing or the cash balances decreasing. Remember, bank, uh, the, cash, uh, the cash at the bank and also the cash in hand, uh, both are assets and they fall under the category of current assets. So when an asset increases, we say from the, our basics of accounting, whenever an asset increases, you are supposed to debit it. Whenever an asset decreases, then we are supposed to credit it. So in this particular case, whereby they are saying that they posted 50,000 of the cash into the bank, then the bank is gaining, the bank is actually increasing. And the bank being an asset, it is going to be debited because the, we took money from the cash till and then we transferred it by depositing it in, in the bank. So this is what is going to happen here. On uh, May 4, I record my May 4 there and then uh, because I'm increasing the bank, it is going to be the name of the cash. The other transaction, the corresponding account is going to be the cash. And uh, under the folio column, I'm going to write C1, meaning that's a control entry. So, and uh, on the bank here, I record the 50,000. The 50,000, just like that. The next transaction is about May 9, and uh, on May 9, uh, before I go to May 9, remember this was uh, a contra entry and uh, I said that a contra entry must appear on both sides of the uh, cash book, on the debit side and on the credit side. So what I've, had, I've done, I've increased the bank, by me debiting the bank by 50,000, I've increased the bank balances by 50,000. An asset has increased here, so that's why we are debiting the bank account, because we took money from the cash till and transferred it to the bank. Now let me go to the credit side. Because now we remove the money from the cash, then it means that the cash balances are going to decrease. And whenever an asset decreases, you are supposed to credit. So I will come to the same thing, which is May 4, and then uh, under the details, 
I'm going to record uh, because now I'm decreasing the cash. It is going to be in the name of the bank. And uh, the, this is control entry one. The amount involved is 50,000. So you can be able to see that it has appeared both sides. That's what we mean by a control entry. And the control entries, they affect the cash and the bank, the bank columns there. So now let us move to the next transaction, which they say that uh, I purchased goods for 21,000 and paid by check. So we purchased the goods uh, by, for 21,000 and paid by check. So these are payments. These are payments and the payments are going to be recorded on the credit side. So I'm going to come on uh, May 9 here. And uh, because we purchased the goods, when we talk about purchasing goods, then that is going to be the corresponding account is going to be purchases account. But if it was purchased equipment, an uncurrent asset to be specific, we open an account by that uh, non-current asset. For example, if it was purchased uh, uh, maybe motor vehicle of maybe 21 million, then uh, under the details here, I could have written uh, motor vehicle, which is going to be the corresponding account, which is going to be the motor vehicle account. But when we talk about purchase of goods, the corresponding account is going to be purchases. So what you need to know is that uh, whenever we purchase a non-current asset, we open an account of that non-current asset, like buildings, machinery, we are going to open an account. So even if it is on the cash book, we are, uh, we are not going to record the purchase if it was purchase of equipment then we could have said under the details equipment here because the corresponding account would have been equipment account. So purchases and uh, the amount involved is 21,000 and it was uh, by check. So it's going to be uh, 21,000 just like that because it was by a check, I record it under the bank column. And then uh, on uh, May 12th, they are saying that uh, uh, cash sales amounted to 28,000. Uh, cash sales amounted to 28,500. So we made cash sales. So meaning that cash increased. We are now going to actually be able to debit the cash column here because the cash is coming in, money is coming in. So it's going to be on May 12th. And then uh, uh, under the details I'm going to write sales and then I go to the cash I record the amount that was involved there it was 28,500 28,500 so I record that particular 28,500 just like that and then we have another question now a transaction I mean uh, of 13 which they are saying sold goods for 17,500 to Silas on credit. We sold goods for 17,500 to Silas on credit. So this is what I want you to be always remember, that uh, when we are preparing a cash book, a cash book we are going to record only cash transactions. That's why it is known as a cash book. So because they are saying just on credit that way, uh, this is a transaction that uh, is trying to confuse you a little bit. They want to confuse you so that you record it uh, in the cash book. So a transaction that is on credit, we do not record it in the cash book. So that is a transaction that is there for the basis of actually misleading you in a way that you end up recording it. So credit transactions, they do not find their way to the cash book. We do not record credit transactions. We only record cash transactions. So let us go to the next transaction which is trans uh, May 15, and on May 15 they are saying, purchased goods for 46,400 from Tito. Purchased goods for 46,400 from Tito on credit. So that's also on credit. Credit transactions, they do not appear in the cash book. We only record cash transactions. So the moment you see that credit transactions, do not record it in the cash book only cash transactions and then we go to the uh, May 24th they are saying that Silas settled his account by check 
So they are not mentioning the amount because you know the transaction from above there. So they are saying that on May 24th, Sider settled his account by check and they are not mentioning the amount. The reason being is because up there on May 13th, they had uh, given you an information that sold goods for uh, 17,500 to Silas on credit. So if Silas settled his account by check, then it means that Silas, our debtor, paid us the 17,500 and it was by check. So I've just come to, because it's a payment money factor, I mean, uh, Silas paid us, paid the business, meaning that now money is actually coming in because we are being paid. So, because he settled that particular amount, I'm going to come to uh, 24, and then uh, under here I write uh, Silas is the one who paid, he was our debtor, and he paid uh, by a check, so I just come to the bank column and record the 17,000. what you mean there and then uh, on that first may uh, there are, uh, the transaction there is that uh, paid tito half of the amount uh, by check so we paid tito half of the amount by check so meaning that uh, we are going now to pay this particular individual and when we are making payments we are supposed to credit so what you are just trying to uh, do there you just take your calculator and they are not mentioning the amount because the transaction was up there. You can be able to see the transaction of date 15. They are just saying that uh, you, uh, you purchased goods for 46,500 from Tito on credit. And now you are paying half of the amount. So you are going to take 46,400 and then you divide by 2 because now you are paying half of the amount, which is going to be... 23,200. So you are going to come on that first here. And then uh, you write the individual that you paid, which is Tito. And it was uh, by check. And then you record your 23,200. 23, uh, just like that. So you can be able to see that uh, we done with uh, this uh, particular uh, uh, cash book. We have done all the transactions. So what we are going to do is that uh, we are going to balance them off. We are going to balance uh, the bank, the cash and the bank columns off and then uh, we will be done with it. So you just take your calculator and we expect the cash book, uh, the cash column to be more on uh, actually on the debit side. So what we're going to do is that uh, we will be able to calculate this. And also this one here. Uh, that way. So you take uh, the 8,000. And then you add the 28,500. 28,500. So I can be able to get 108, 500 there, and also here I can be able to get 108 because it's supposed to balance. This side is supposed to be more, and this is just like a ledger. The side that has more is the amount that we are going to use in terms of balancing. So uh, then I'm going to have balance card down here so I have the balance card down so that's going to be I will just add the 15,000 plus 50,000 15,000 plus 50,000 whereby we get 65,000 so I'm going to take 108,500 minus the 65,000 so 108,500 minus 65,000, which is going to be 43,500 as the balance carried down.
sometimes it's better you ascertain if these particular totals are equal to one or eight five hundred so that you don't end up getting a wrong answer so I can be able to add fifteen thousand uh, to this for the three five hundred and also the fifty uh, thousand and then uh, I can be able to confirm that it's actually one or eight five hundred sometimes you confirm so the balance carried down is going to be the difference between the debit side and the credit side and the difference between that particular debit side and the debit side and the credit side. So that's the balance carried down. I come to the bank column. Bank column is better you confirm both of them because sometimes you may have a bank offer draft whereby the balance broken down is going to be on the credit side because of the bank offer draft. But uh, in this case, this side is going to have a more amount, which is fifty thousand uh, plus seventeen thousand but five hundred which is actually 67,500 and they are 67,500 so that is going to be the bigger side the debit side so let me add the 21,000 uh, plus 23,200 23,200 so I can be able to get 44,200 uh, 44,200 so I'm going to take 67,500 minus the totals of this so that I get the balancing figure there. So it's going to be 67,500 minus the 44,200 that you got after adding this and this minus that one. So the answer is going to be 23,300. So sometimes it's good as I have said to add this and this and this, you add the 21,000, uh, 23,000, and plus the 23,300 uh, here, uh, so that you can be able to see it is equal to 67,500. So I can be able to add uh, 23,300 uh, plus 23,200 plus 21,000. So I can be able to see it is equal to 67,500. So what we have carried down here, it is going to be brought down on the opposite side. So I just come here and then light balance and brought it down. Under the cash, what we carried down is 43,500. The one that we carried down is what we bring to the opposite side as a balance brought down. So it's going to be 43,500 here. And then under the bank column is going to be 23,300. 23, so that's how we prepare the two column cash book. In our next uh, revision again, we are going to touch on uh, the three column cash book, which is going to have an element of discount. So we'll be able to do a three column cash book that is going to touch on those particular discounts. So that is it. Uh, just enjoy that particular vision.